You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5. Coming up, Hurricane Florence could soon be a Category 5 storm. What conditions could be like when it makes landfall later on this week near the Carolinas? Red tide still wreaking havoc on CS to keep the latest on conditions and fish kills at Turtle Beach. And we'll tell you how groups across Manatee and Sarasota counties are paying tribute today to victims of 9-11 17 years later. Good morning, Suncoast starts right now. And good morning. Tuesday, I'm Ray Collins. Stephanie Webb is off today. She is sick. Yesterday, I had a scheduled day off, so we both weren't here, as you know. And thanks to Erica Jackson, who filled in on very short notice. And uh, she came back after being on the air three hours earlier, Sunday night. So a marathon shift for that young lady. Let's get to the forecast now. Here's John Scalzi with the Tuesday weather. Thank you, Ray. Welcome back. We've got a few scattered showers down to the south of us right now. Generally, winds aloft are encouraging this little trough, low pressure to lift northward. But as it does so, I think a lot of this stuff is going to just kind of die out. So I'll put our rain chance this morning at about 20 or 30 percent along the coastline a little bit higher, down to the south a little bit higher. We'll have more in a minute. Back to you, Ray. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking the roads right now. There is the scene. First off in Manatee County, not too much to speak of. State Road 70, a little uh, congestion there between 301 and 41. Farther south, not much to speak of today, so far anyway, on that section of Sarasota County. And then looking farther south, we see uh, an issue there. I-75, an accident at the exit 191 River Road to exit 182 Sumter Road. So if that continues, we might see some congestion building there. That is quite a, a nine mile stretch uh, they're pointing out to us there in the uh, South County area around North Pearl. Keep you posted in about 15 minutes on that one. Right now, Hurricane Florence continues to gain strength in the Atlantic and the governors now of North and South Carolina and Virginia have all declared states of emergency far ahead of the storm making landfall. People have begun stocking up on plywood, bottled water and other supplies. Off Virginia's coast, red flags have already been flying on beaches, warning swimmers to stay out of the water as the seas start to kick up. People are also rushing to get emergency kits ready, maps, escape routes, and fill sandbags and secure their homes. We know the drill here. In the meantime, Florida-based Carnival Cruise Line has already rerouted its cruise ships to avoid that storm. And even though the storm will have no impact here on the Sun Coast, the topic of hurricane shelters in the city of Venice, or lack thereof, has once again come up. The Venice Community Center was upgraded back in 2006 with stronger windows to withstand hurricane force winds, and the center also has its own generators. But Sarasota County said the building is still on an island, and if the storm exceeds 18 feet and storm surge, the entire island of Venice could be underwater, including the community center. So instead, leaders have a new idea, a transportation plan. Residents would meet at a pickup point and then be taken by bus to shelters in other parts of Sarasota County. But one of the shortcomings to transporting people to shelters with county buses is once winds hit, and I believe it's 35 miles an hour, they pull the buses off the road. Good point, Mayor. The county is actively looking for other options for hurricane shelters that could withstand a Category 5 hurricane and also be on higher ground as well. And most areas in Sarasota County are prone to some amount of flooding from rain or coastal flooding. Sarasota County government is hosting several flood zone workshops in the coming weeks so property owners can know their flood risks. The first one is tomorrow morning at the Elsie Quirk Library in Englewood. And to stay prepared during hurricane season, just visit our website, mysuncoast.com. Under the weather tab, you'll find a link to our one-hour hurricane special recently called Surviving the Storm, as well as a printable 2018 hurricane guide. 17 years ago today, we all know where we were. It was the most tragic terrorist attack to ever hit our country. ABC's Marla Spence spoke to a survivor who was in the World Trade Center. She joins us now live from outside the police station where there is an item there salvaged from the World Trade Center. Marla? 
Hey, Ray, I'm live outside Sarasota Police Department where a beam of Tower 2 of the World Trade Center sits in honor of 9-11 and those who lost their lives. Now, it's a tragic event that leaves so many memories of that day on the minds of people who either watched the attack live on TV or experienced it firsthand. I spoke to David Kotok, who is the chief investment officer and chairman of Cumberland Advisors in Sarasota. He tells us he was in the World Trade Center in Tower 2 the day of the the attack. Kotok says he was there for a conference with other economists. He says the conference happened to be on the ground floor in Tower 2 when a plane went crashing into Tower 1 of the World Trade Center. He says at that very split second he had no idea what was happening, but he knew he had to get out of the building. Kotok says minutes after he walked out of an emergency door in Tower 2, he looked back and saw a plane hit the building. He was in moments before it collapsed. He says he he will never forget that day or the things he saw. I can close my eyes and I see a couple jumping from the North Tower holding hands. That'll be with me as long as I'm alive. I spent six weeks without sleep. And Kotok tells us till this very day, he is very lucky to be alive. He says he does not only want today to be a reminder, but every single day he wants people to remember the attack, how it shook our country and the, the many lives that were lost on this day 17 years ago. Reporting live in Sarasota, Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Marla. Other news, red tide is still plaguing Suncoast beaches. This video was sent to us by an ABC 7 viewer showing conditions affected by red tide on Turtle Beach on southern Siesta Key yesterday. You can see brown water, even some dead fish washed ashore. There's also reports of dead fish spotted all the way north to Pinellas County on beaches there as well yesterday. Test results are confirming that many of the dead dolphins recovered last month on the Sun Coast died from red tide exposure. Moat Marine Lab says 16 dead dolphins were found in Sarasota and Manatee waters during a recent two-week span in August. Moat performed necropsies and sent 10 tissue samples to an outside lab for a detailed analysis. Scientists say almost all of them had stomachs full of fish, indicating the dolphins were exposed to red tide through their food. It does take a while for that toxin to bioaccumulate up the food chain and reach the dolphins, um, which is why you might see kind of dolphins being affected a little bit later than sea turtles or manatees. Moat says the tissues were sent to a lab that processes red tide samples from throughout the state of Florida. Reminder that disaster assistance is available for small business owners impacted by red tide. Sarasota County now is working with the Small Business Administration to provide low interest loans. They've got a business recovery center at Bee Ridge Park, which is off South Lockwood Ridge Road. Representatives are there to answer questions and help with applications from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 till 2 on Saturdays. You can find all of our Red Tide coverage in one place. Go to our website, mysuncoast.com slash Red Tide. New developments now out of Pinellas County, where the funeral for two-year-old Jordan Bellevue will be held this Saturday in Clearwater. Bellevue's mother, Cherie Stinson, is charged with his first-degree murder, aggravated child abuse, and lying to police after a two-day Amber Alert led law enforcement right back to her once his body was found in the woods near their home. So a viewing is planned for Friday night before he is laid to rest on Saturday. Here on the Sun Coast, police have identified a man found dead in Northport last weekend. Tyron Kennard was found dead Saturday morning in a remote area near the Charlotte County line. Police later found his car in Port Charlotte. Detectives are asking for help to solve this suspicious death. If you can help, call the Northport Police at 429-7323. An update now on another shooting investigation, this one at a Sarasota County church where sheriff deputies are now identifying a suspect. They responded to a, a fight where shots were fired at a large party at St. Wilfred Episcopal Church on Wilkinson Road on Saturday night. They're trying to find this man, Joaquin Vasquez Sosa. The victim has since been treated and released. Deputies say the suspect and the victim knew each other. He was treated for gunshot wounds to the leg. And the Sheriff's Office and Suncoast Technical College are partnering to offer self-defense classes this fall. Women can sign up for three sessions at a time. They're three hours long. 
cost $10 each. The first session starts October 3rd and the 10th and the 17th. For more information, you can sign up at, uh, through our website at mysuncoast.com. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, Bracing for Florence. A closer look at how people in the Carolinas are getting ready for a hurricane there. And later in the hour, why an officer in Dallas is accused of accidentally killing a man inside his own apartment. It's a sad story there. But first, here's the forecast from John Scalzi. So, we do have the rain box checked on our drive time forecast. We do have a chance during the morning hours of seeing a scattered shower close to the coastline. It won't be heavy stuff, but they'll be around. And then as we head into the evening, we'll probably watch all of that move inland and leave us with rain-free conditions. We'll have the forecast for you in just a second. Pets bring so much joy to our lives. They're loyal, they're protective, and smart. Yet as smart as our pets might be, they can't advocate for themselves, especially in the event of a natural disaster. During Hurricane Harvey, many families were separated from their pets. That's why it's important your pet is part of your family's disaster preparedness plan. Talk to your veterinarian and visit banfieldfoundation.org slash disaster. Don't save it for a rainy day. Honda, I like it. You like to pay less. That's why you made Honda Accord the best-selling mid-size car in America. Get the redesigned Accord, the North American Car of the Year, or Civic, a KBP.com Best Buy for less than the competition. Like SUVs and trucks? Get Motor Trends SUV of the Year, CRV, the eight passenger pilot, or Ridgeline truck for up to 4240 less today at your local Honda dealer. Find out first at four on the Sun Coast with ABC7 News at four. ABC7 News at four starts with a detailed look at your first alert weather forecast to help you plan and prepare. We give you a fresh, fast-paced rundown of the day's top stories and videos, including breaking news, live updates, and traffic hotspots, all at a new, more convenient time. Find out first at four, weekdays on ABC7. Gettle's got what you're looking for at Gettle.com. 17 new car brands, over a thousand used vehicles, prices and payments you can afford, credit help if you need it, and they pay cash for your old car. Plus, Gettle Pre-Owned Certified Plus means buying with peace of mind. Need service? Gettle's got that too. Gettle's got it. Visit Gettle.com. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. Many of the people that were quoted said they never said that. They never said that. And I actually said in the tweet this morning, I said, look, if I spoke that way, I'd never be president. Bob Woodward's book showing life in the Trump White House with quotes from Trump's cabinet members. Will this cause a stir in Washington? I'm Jacqueline Matter. We'll discuss the book at the Trapezoid. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 76 degrees our air temperature. We have a dew point to match. 100% relative humidity out there. Feels kind of thick during the first few hours of this morning. We'll have about a 30% chance of rain showers decreasing by noon to 20% and even more so by 3 p.m. as all of the showers continue to press inland. You can see this kind of trough of low pressure gradually lifting northward. It is being pushed by upper level winds and although all of this is very light rainfall and a lot of it not even reaching the ground, there is the possibility that near the coast you might get a little bit of a sprinkle or so and we have one in progress now around uh, Inglewood just along the coast. Winds again today are generally out of the west and that means that as this trough lifts northward we'll watch the sea breeze build early. The trough will kind of dissipate and we'll watch our showers build in inland areas 
later on this afternoon, leaving the coastline quiet. So I think it should be a very pleasant afternoon along the coast. Of course, it also means that red tide irritants have been blowing a little bit closer to shore and people are complaining about that again. But as we head into tomorrow, we'll see that wind shift back to the east and that should help things. Of course, Florence beginning to move a little bit closer to the coastline. We'll continue watching that one more day of west wind then winds shift to the east tomorrow. We're of course watching lots of things in the tropics. We've got disturbance too with a 50% chance of developing moving away from us. We've got Helene, Isaac and Florence all hurricanes. Helene not a threat to the United States. Isaac will have to watch and 95 L given a good chance of development as it moves into the Gulf, but it will likely move away. Florence is not strengthening. It is sitting just at the 140 mile an hour um, uh, category four limit right now. It is probably undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle and really not much has changed, maybe inched a little bit further to the south. Forecast still by Thursday night to make landfall as possibly a category four storm. Rainfall amounts from this storm producing very heavy rainfall across that coastline, perhaps as much as two feet of rainfall. Northwest wind comes in at about 10 and the forecast for the week ahead calls for about a 30% chance of rain today and tomorrow, 40% on Thursday as winds shift and then possibly over the weekend we actually dry out due to the influence of Florence. Back to you. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. 301 northbound, some early congestion there as you cross over State Road 70 heading toward downtown Bradenton. Otherwise, not too bad. Checking farther south now, here's the scene. Fruitville Road westbound from almost Beneva in toward Tuttle. Some congestion there already. And then checking our final map to the south. Still an ongoing issue that's quite an extensive one there. Southbound 75 from 191 to 182. So from Venice to Northport, a nine mile stretch there. Not showing any congestion there or residual backup, but be aware of that if you're heading southbound on 75 through the uh, South County area. Right now, Hurricane Florence is gaining strength and barreling toward the Carolinas, as John told us. And as ABC's Janae Norman tells us, over three million people have already evacuated. Already a Category 4 storm, Hurricane Florence is prompting evacuations along the East Coast. This one looks a little uglier than other ones. Um, rather be safe than sorry. From South Carolina to Virginia, more than a million people are leaving low-lying areas. Others are stockpiling supplies. Candles, flashlights, food, liquor, gas, <laughs> beer, <laughs> cat food. Long lines lingered at gas stations as people waited to hit the road. Highway 17 in North Carolina already backed up for miles. We do know that we're in the bullseye. North Carolina is taking Hurricane Florence seriously. And you should too. Get ready now. South Carolina is preparing to reverse directions on highways. All lanes of Interstate 26 from Charleston will be heading away from the coast to help accommodate the hundreds of thousands of people evacuating eight counties there. It's going to be inconvenient, but we do not want to risk one South Carolina life in this hurricane. Florence is expected to bring a devastating storm surge and stall after making landfall, bringing potentially catastrophic rainfall and life-threatening winds. NOAA flying through the eye of the storm as it strengthens. Obviously, the, uh, the storm that's out there off the coast right now is a dangerous one. Uh, one of the most uh, dangerous storms we've seen in, uh, in recent memory. President Trump says he's spoken with the governors of both Carolinas and Virginia, and he says he's been told that this is one of the worst storms to hit the East Coast in many years. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. New details out of Washington now as President Trump continues to tweet about his frustration about today's release of Bob Woodward's new book. It's called Fear, Trump in the White House. President Trump claims the book was an assault against him and suggests he'd write his own book about the real White House. Now, meantime, mean, former President Obama is back on the campaign trail for his fellow Democrats. In two months, we have a chance to restore some sanity in our politics. <laughs> Democrats are hoping President Obama will give them the boost they need to take control of the House of Representatives. 
Printing is happening today on that book called Fear It Hits the Shelves Nationwide. The publisher is going to make a million copies to keep up with demand. Fear is already number one on Amazon and Barnes & Noble's online bestseller lists. On to consumer news now. Apple says new tariffs on China could make their products more expensive. The U.S. has proposed $200 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese goods. Apple said its wireless AirPods and the Apple Watch could get more expensive now. President Trump says the solution for the tech giant to make their products in the U.S. and not in China. A new survey by the HR advisory firm Future Workplace reveals the most desired perks for office workers. Number one, natural light and a view of the outdoors. The answer won out over all other perks like on-site child care, on-site cafeterias or fitness centers. 43% of those surveyed reported feeling gloomy due to a lack of light, while 47% reported feeling tired from the absence of natural light or even a window. And we can relate to that in the newsroom here. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, which cities could have access to AT&T's new 5G signal by the end of the year, including one right here in Florida? And next half hour, we'll tell you how drama is developing now between two members of the Sarasota School Board. It is 520 right now. Here is a look at North Carolina's Outer Banks, Emerald Isle in North Carolina. Hurricane heading in that direction. They're used to packing up there, but this one could get big. We'll continue to track it right here on ABC7. From the moment she walked in the door, we stopped having to go to the pharmacy. Certain prescriptions, um, my health plan or the pharmacy uh, wasn't even able to get here. And hospice provided them, and all we had to do was call up, and um, the next thing they know, there, there was another, you know, a delivery. What do you get when you cross your tired, aching back with this fragile egg? The Egg Sitter Cushion, an amazing new flex cushion that supports your backside and spine so well, you can sit on an egg without breaking it. Incredible! You want me to sit on this egg? Okay. Can't believe I'm doing this. I don't even feel it. <laughs> it didn't even break? Oh, I was wondering about that. Now that's a good cushion. <laughs> the honeycomb design is constructed of elasticore that absorbs pressure points by collapsing in on itself. That's why even this egg won't break under direct pressure. Now long days at the office will be more comfortable, dinner more enjoyable, and painful car rides a thing of the past. Get your Egg Sitter Support Cushion for just $39.99. It comes with a free non-slip washable cover and our 10-year comfort guarantee. But wait, call right now and you can get a second cushion. Just pay separate fee. Call now. Call 1-800-232-1564. That's 1-800-232-1564. Call now or go to eggsitter.com. Order now. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, B, console her, Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can too. For free help, visit cdc.gov slash tips. Welcome back. This is a live look at the National September 11th Memorial in New York City there in the southern end of the island. Uh, quite a 
uh, a fountain of sorts there. I had a chance to visit there a couple of years ago and quite a, a solemn and somber uh, place to visit. And that's where there'll be a memorial service this morning, along with many others here on the Sun Coast. We'll detail those throughout the morning here on ABC7. Don't forget our web pages. Love to hear from you. You can check out our respective web pages. Mine's at Ray Collins, ABC7, and Stephanie and John as well have pages we update on a regular basis. Stop by and like the page and say hello. We'll always get back to you as quickly as possible. Lots of behind the scenes shots. 524 right now. Back to the news. AT&T will launch its mobile 5G network in several more cities, including a city in Florida. The story in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, faster mobile services. AT&T says it's bringing its 5G wireless network to more cities by the end of the year. They include Houston, New Orleans, Jacksonville, and Louisville. A 5G, or fifth generation, is set to be 100 times faster than current standards. Verizon has also announced plans to roll out 5G. Another top executive is leaving Snapchat, the latest in a string of departures. Chief Strategy Officer Imran Khan has been with the company for nearly four years. He does plan to stay on until they can find a replacement, but Snapchat's struggling stock fell 2% on the news. The hottest thing in online gaming is going old school. Fortnite is combining with Monopoly to create a board game. Yeah, Monopoly Fortnite Edition replaces money with health points. The game launches next month. I'll be the symbol. <laughs> One more thing to be addicted with. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites, sponsored by General Electric. At GE Appliances, our ovens come with a look ma, no hands feature. No. <laughs> you guys are something special today. 350. Alexa, ask Geneva to preheat the top oven to 350 for chicken. An oven you can control with your voice as well as your hands. You guys are lucky or cute. Another way we make good things for life. Joy, I do. At Macy's. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov slash concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 78. <laughs> 
if only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5.30. Coming up, the unique way USF Sarasota Manatee is honoring the lives lost on September 11th. Why a Texas police officer says she accidentally killed a man inside his own apartment. And tension within the Sarasota County School Board will tell you which two members are not getting along this half hour on Good Morning Sun Coast. Welcome back. Tuesday, September 11th. I'm Ray Collins. Details of all the ceremonies throughout the area uh, later in the show. But first, let's get to the forecast from meteorologist John Scalzi. Uh, thank you, Ray. So we're looking at a few scattered showers down to our south along a trough of low pressure that's gradually lifting to the north. We have about a 30% chance of a morning shower, especially heavy in areas of Charlotte County. As we head through the morning hours, temperatures will start to rise. Right now, they're in the mid-70s to upper 70s close to the coast and a little bit cloudy out there due to some areas of disturbed weather, 95L to our south. And of course, Florence, too, is something that we will be watching. Still a Category 4 storm. We'll have more on the details of these storms coming up in a few. Right? All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Our maps are a little different today. We're going to try to get at those between now and next time we show them. You'll see on 41 northbound an issue there as you're heading toward the airport. University is a little more obscured today. You can't really make it out. That is now Fruitville Road across the base of this map. So if you can reacclimate yourselves there. Uh, nothing to speak of in the northern half of Sarasota County so far. And the South County continues to show an issue on 75 southbound. We're double checking that. It's indicating a, a nine mile issue between 191 and 182, but it's not showing any other congestion. We're cross checking that to make sure that is indeed the case in the South County region. Well, on this anniversary of 9-11, a memorial has now ar arisen at the USF Sarasota Manatee campus. Students, staff and faculty placed 2,977 American flags in their courtyard. Each flag represents a life lost during the terrorist attack 17 years ago this morning. School officials say it's the first year they have marked 9-11 in this fashion. With every flag that we stick in the ground, uh, I hope people take a minute to just pause and reflect on, on the fact that that, uh, that represents a life, a life that was lost too soon because of uh, just a terrible tragedy. College campuses especially uh, give an area for students to come together, people to come together, different cultures, and I think this is one of those things that just brings people together and unifies them under a single flag and a single cause, and I think that's, that's amazing. Later today on campus, a special event featuring guest speakers and a choir that gets underway in the courtyard about 8.20 a.m. this morning. And there are also other events across the Sun Coast to honor lives lost 17 years ago this morning. Northport Police will host a ceremony from 8.30 to 9.30 at City Hall. The Manatee County Fire Chiefs Association will host a memorial on the uh, Riverwalk at 8.30 a.m. in downtown Bradenton. The City of Venice will honor the victims and fallen heroes at Patriots Park at 10 a.m. And the Sarasota County Fire Department and Sheriff's Office will hold a joint remembrance at Fire Station 17, which is on DeSoto Road near Honoré at 10 a.m. We'll have more on how local groups are honoring the fallen heroes next hour here on ABC 7. New developments now out of Dallas, where an officer is accused, in fact, she confesses, to accidentally killing a man inside his own apartment. She is Amber Geiger. She was originally expected to face manslaughter charges, but the Texas Rangers now are saying they need more time to investigate this one. She was in uniform going home after her long shift Thursday when she went in the wrong apartment and fatally shot who she thought was an intruder. It was actually her neighbor, a 26-year-old youth pastor. She said she thought the man was in her apartment. This is an extremely bizarre case. From start to the point we are now, none of the normal protocols have been uh, applied. 
Now, Geiger was also involved in a shooting last year, but has not been indicted in that one. That man is still recovering in the hospital. Here on the Sun Coast, drama between Sarasota County school board members continues to heat up. Over the weekend, members clashed on social media, insulting each other about text messages, as well as bathroom breaks and alleged attacks on families. Now, Caroline Zucker even blocked fellow member Eric Robinson and his wife, Christine. The tweet firestorm stems from an incident where a Zucker supporter tweeted an attack on Robinson after he stepped out of a meeting to answer a text from his daughter. Robinson claims Zucker liked that tweet. The two went back and forth on social media. Robinson now claims that Zucker's action to block him could be a violation of Florida Sunshine Laws. Opponents to redeveloping Lido Beach Pavilion say they have a new reason why the city shouldn't make improvements. Besides their concerns about extra traffic and noise there, now they say such a drastic upgrade would be against FEMA rules. They say the improvements would far exceed FEMA's rule, which only allows 50% of the value of a building to be done on coastal building improvements. You don't submit a set of site plans to be approved that are not FEMA compliant. The time to get those uh, uh, in compliance is at the time before you get them approved. They're changing a residential area into a party town commercial area. And most of the people that bought here bought because it was residential and they don't want to see it change. Now those were two opponents. There are also supporters as well of this project. The Sarasota City Planning Commission will host a public meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at City Hall to talk more about this redevelopment plan. If you've driven past SRQ-141, you might have seen it. Hard to miss. A new $25 million, 128-foot-tall air traffic control tower. There it is. Airport officials say it'll help air traffic controllers provide safer and more efficient service. So you can see the airport's investing a lot of money in, in keeping the facility great, uh, while at the same time we've not incurred any debt, and we also uh, are totally self-sufficient with no taxing power. So uh, I think the people get a billion dollars worth of value each year at no cost to the local community. It's a pretty good deal for the community. And Meantime, another multi-million dollar project is underway at SRQ. Crews are also installing 13 new jet bridges, which passengers use to board and leave the planes. They'll replace the old ones, which are 30 years old. The new jet bridges will have air conditioning and floor-to-ceiling windows at each end that will let in more natural light. That project costs about $13 million and should be done by December or January. Very nice improvements there at SRQ. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, we'll hear from somebody inside one of the towers 17 years ago and how they escaped disaster that day. It's a local Sarasota man. And why a Mississippi teenager traded her homecoming crown for a football helmet. It's a great story. It is 537 right now on this Tuesday morning. There's a shot outside our window at the downtown skyline looking down toward uh, the south direction. First, here's the uh, day planner from John Scalzi. Thanks, Ray. We're looking at about a 30% chance of a shower during the first few hours of this morning, followed by decreasing rain chances through the noontime hour and into the afternoon as storms move inland. School bus forecast calls for a chance of a shower at the school buses this morning. Slight chance, better chance of sunshine, though, as they're dropped off this afternoon after a daytime high in the upper 80s. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in just a few. Judy here, I think. I think hospice was a tremendous source of support for her. Absolutely. With Jennifer and Kimberly and Liza's constant contact with us, coming in, just knowing that there was someone with knowledge there to back us up, to answer our questions, it made a world of difference. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed. Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not ever. 
No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams' engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Air temperature comes in at 76 degrees. We have uh, a fair amount of cloud cover mixed with starry skies out there, but uh, we also have some rain showers in progress. The dew point value coming in at 76 makes it feel kind of sticky. The rain shower chances at about 30% this morning, but that decreases as we head into the afternoon to really vanishingly small numbers as we head into the later afternoon. Little trough of low pressure lifting north, riding on a, uh, a general southerly wind aloft. You don't have to go too high up into the atmosphere to find that southerly wind that's helping to push these showers northward. We have scattered showers in uh, areas of Charlotte, County right now, but much less rainfall in the uh, northern sections of the viewing area, especially into Manatee County. As these lift north, the tendency will be for them to kind of diminish in uh, coverage. So uh, I think a rain chance of about 30% should certainly do it. Weather highlights include this westerly wind flow, which again encourages those showers to form in inland areas later in the afternoon, but that shifts east tomorrow. And as that occurs, maybe we'll get a little bit of relief from the red tide, which has again gotten uh, aggravating to many people, especially closer to the coastline. We'll watch Florence continue to move up toward the Carolinas, and we'll have one more day of the west wind before we get this east wind shift. We watch the tropics. And it's possible that Florence's influence on our weather may actually dry us out as it makes landfall in the Carolinas. Several different storm systems we watch, of course, Florence, but also Isaac and 95L are of interest to us a little bit closer to home. No threat to the United States at this time, but we'll watch it. Helene and disturbance too are of no issue. Florence, a category four storm with still 140 mile an hour winds, possibly undergoing an eyewall replacement cycle at this time, could lead to some stronger winds as we head down the road probably making landfall as a Category 4 storm or so by uh, Friday. Uh, Hurricane Helene, Hurricane Isaac, Helene not an issue, recurves back out into the open waters. Isaac continues on a course that takes it into the Caribbean by the weekend and does bear watching. So does 95L located there. If you'd look at the tracks of the two storms, I think 95L will probably be a wet weather maker for parts of Texas and really not impact Florida. Uh, Isaac will have to watch as it moves into the Caribbean. It may fall apart, but some computer models also lifted north, so it's something to watch as we head into the weekend.
Forecast for us looks like this. We'll have foreboding weather today. This west wind northwest coming in at about 10 knots. And the forecast for the seven days ahead include about a 30% chance of showers today. We see the wind shift occur tomorrow and our rain chances go up a little bit for Thursday as those storms are pushed back to the coast in the afternoon. And then over the weekend, perhaps we dry out a little bit under the sinking air influence around the periphery of Florence. Back to you. Thank you, John. You'll see 41 North Trail as you approach University. Some congestion there right in front of the Wingland Museum. Otherwise, uh, pretty clear in the uh, northern of our three maps. Farther south, not much to speak of so far. Looks pretty good. And then our final map to the south. We'll see if that situation still continues on 75 southbound. It does. It, it indicates a problem between exit 191 and 182 southbound. So be aware of that if you're heading out this morning anytime soon. Happening today, several events in the area to honor those who lost their lives on September 11th. 17 years ago was the most tragic terrorist attack to ever hit our country. ABC's Marla Spence talked to a local survivor who was in the World Trade Center that day. She joins us now from outside Sarasota Police Headquarters. Marla? Hey, Ray, this is a beam from the South Tower of the World Trade Center. It sits in honor of 9-11 and the victims that lost their lives on this very day 17 years ago. Now, it's also from the same tower one Sarasota man was in the day of the attack. David Kotok tells us he was in the World Trade Center in Tower 2 for a conference that day. He says the conference happened to be on the ground floor in the South Tower when a plane went crashing into the North Tower and at that very very second, he says he had no idea what was happening, but he knew he had to get out. I went out. There was only one exit I could take, an emergency door on Liberty Street. And of course, as soon as you were outside, you saw the North Tower smoking and uh, it, you saw people hanging out and trying to stay alive. You saw jumpers. I remember the jumpers clearly. It was an awful sight. And I worked my way across West Street and moved about one block, turned around and looked at the North Tower on fire, trying to figure out what it was, because we didn't know. And while I was there, I saw the plane hit the South Tower. And Kotok says for six weeks following the attack, he could not sleep. He says up until today, he still gets alarmed by loud noises, which he believes is from the day that he experienced being in that tower on the day of the September 11 attack. Today, he will be speaking at USF Sarasota Manatee at 830 this morning to talk about his experience during 9-11 and hopefully remind people of how many lives were lost in that tragic event that happened 17 years ago years ago today. Reporting live in Sarasota, Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. HealthSmart, now a new study found a link between a common painkiller and increased risk of heart attack. Researchers say diclofenac, which is also sold under the brand names Vulturin, Cambia, and Solarase, have a higher risk of adverse events compared to similar drugs. It's one of the most widely used and routinely recommended drugs sold in the world. Researchers say it should not be available over the counter, and when prescribed, it should have appropriate package warnings about potential health risks. When you go on flights, usually you're thinking about the destination, of course, but medical experts say don't forget the health hazards on board those airplanes. Reporter Reed Binion has some reminders. An airline cabin can double as a flying petri dish when not maintained properly. The enclosed space, recirculated air, and large numbers of people make planes prime breeding grounds for bacteria. The tray table, the place where passengers rest their food, was by far the most contaminated surface tested. It was followed by the overhead air vent, the lavatory flush button, and the seat belt buckle. So what can travelers do to help fend off illness above cruising altitude? Carry antibacterial wipes and hand sanitizer. Wipe down tray tables, seatbelt buckles, armrests, and seat back pockets when you sit down. Hydrate. Because the air in the plane's cabin is recirculated, it contains less humidity than most people are used to. Choose a window seat. 
People who sit by the window have the smallest risk of infection because they have the least contact with other passengers. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Binion. American Airlines rolling out free live TV for domestic passengers. The airline is flipping the switch on 100 planes to start first off, which plans to keep on growing both live TV and high-speed internet as well. It's more than 700 planes by next year. Passengers will also be able to stream via their laptops, smartphones, or tablets. It will have 12 channels from which to, from which to choose. JetBlue, Frontier, and Virgin America have satellite TV at all seats as well. Entertainment News co-host of The Talk on CBS and wife of Les Moonves, Julie Chen, is taking a few days off. This in the wake of her husband stepping down as chairman of CBS amid sexual assault allegations, which he denies. Chen says she'll be there live Thursday night, though, as host of the CBS reality show Big Brother. And with a weekend M Emmy win, John Legend is now the first African-American male to take home an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. It's a trifecta called the EGOT. Legend reached that rare status by winning his, uh, for his role, rather, in Jesus Christ Superstar last holiday season on NBC. Only 12 performers have ever achieved the EGOT status, and at 39 years young, Legend is one of the youngest to win all four in his career. Well, their football team isn't doing very well right now in the polls, but in academics, better for University of Florida right now. The university ranks eight in the latest U.S. News and World Report Best College Rankings. That's up one spot from last year. Also, Florida State jumped up seven spots to number 26. USF, UCF, and FIU also made the top 100. And the new College of Florida right here on the Sun Coast improved to number five on the list of best public liberal arts colleges. And look at this, a Mississippi teenager traded her homecoming crown for a football helmet and kicked the winning extra point at a big game for her high school last weekend. Senior Kaylee Foster is the team's kicker and has been kicking competitively now since seventh grade. Before the game, she was also named homecoming queen. And during the game, she kicked two field goals and an extra point for the overtime win. Foster's first sport is uh, soccer, which she'll be playing next year at Mississippi College. What a neat young lady she is. Here's a peek outside our window right now. Very well illuminated shot of the Rosemary District in downtown Sarasota. Off in the distance, looking south right now. We're going to come back in two minutes and update the day's top three head headlines. And also one last talk to John before we end this hour. Clogged pores are disgusting. Introducing Dermasuction, the easy way to suck that yuck out of your pores. Dermasuction removes blackheads and dirt from your pores. Just look at everything it extracts. The secret's the gentle vacuum action. Watch as Dermasuction extracts so much yuck, leaving your skin feeling clean and youthful. The gunk that had been pulled out, I was pretty horrified, but better in the Dermasuction than on my face. It's almost addictive because you can see all the stuff coming out of your skin that you don't even really know is there. Call now to order to your dermosuction for just $19.99. We'll also include our small and large body probes, the sonic microdermabrasion probe, and the handy travel case, all absolutely free. Order now and you can double the offer. Just pay a separate fee. You can get all this, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-213-9301. That's 1-800-213-9301. Or visit dermosuction.com. So call 1-800-213-9301 now. Gettle's got what you're looking for at Gettle.com. 17 new car brands, over a thousand used vehicles, prices and payments you can afford, credit help if you need it, and they pay cash for your old car. Plus, Gettle Pre-Owned Certified Plus means buying with peace of mind. Need service? Gettle's got that too. Gettle's got it. Visit Gettle.com. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied, and her caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs. Stop the crimes.
My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Welcome back. Here are the top stories in the Sun Coast today. Ceremonies are planned all over the area for the 17th anniversary today of the 9-11 attacks. USF Sarasota Manatee has flags for each of the nearly 3,000 victims killed that day by terrorists. Sarasota County Sheriff Deputy is looking for a man for a weekend shooting at a party Saturday night on Wilkinson Road at St. Wilfred Episcopal Church. They say this man, Joaquin Vasquez Sosa, shot another man who has since been treated and released. SRQ is now using its new air traffic control tower. It's just a few yards off US 41. You might have seen it. 128 feet tall and $25 million. State of the art there. One last peek at the forecast this hour from John Scalzi now. Thanks, Ray. We have a couple of uh, items for you to take with you today. We have a fairly low rain chance, 30% for the next couple of hours, 20% thereafter. We have a wind shift tomorrow, which will favor afternoon showers and thunderstorms that drift back to the coastline, kind of a typical summertime pattern. And of course, we're carefully watching the tropics, particularly Florence making landfall in North Carolina. But for us, Isaac, which will be in the Caribbean by the weekend. Back to you. All right, much more next hour about all the evacuations right now. Millions leaving North Carolina's Outer Banks and also South Carolina as well. Big evacuation plans there underway. Details of that story and much more news coming up next hour right here on Good Morning Suncoast.